you know, let's take the first few minutes and just give, you know, what is your 2024, you know, this year was Gen AI. And if you guess that, you're right. What's 2024? What's the tech trends of 24 that you're going to be looking for? Yeah, it's going to come no surprise that, that AI for 2024 is going to be uh, front and center. Uh, but before I dive into that, I want to make sure that that people see the gamut of it. I think that we're going to see a quantum uh, evolution uh, next year with real uh, value uh, to the enterprise uh, or to scientists. I think the hybrid multi-cloud progression uh, is going to get, we're going to see more fabrics and those fabrics going from 1.0 uh, to 2.0 for enterprises to, to lean into it. And what I mean is, uh, regardless of where you're running your workload, whether it's in your on-prem data center, whether it's on your data center edge, let's say you're a retailer or a manufacturer, a sovereign cloud, public cloud, being able to manage core services like applications, uh, like networking, various forms of security, you're going to see those start to be making start making a, a much bigger impact. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna see, dare I say the metaverse, right? Um, we are gonna see, I think it's still gonna be in exper experimentation time, right? You have an Apple headset that's a thousand bucks and you $3,000 and more of an ISV and developer vehicle and, you know, looky-loo, but, I do think that is going to be the next generation uh, of experiences. And whether it's five years out, 10 years out, I can't tell you exactly uh, once we getting we get to you know a, a one hundred to three hundred dollar headset that does everything that um, Apple's does, uh, Meta will be a player. But uh, I'll give you most of the airtime on AI, but uh, you know most of value capture today, uh, is is on the picks and shovels, the chips, the infrastructure that processes and moves that data. And there are certain companies who uh, got uh, credit, the NVIDIA's, AMD, Broadcom, Marvell, Microsoft with OpenAI, and even enterprise players like IBM and Salesforce. But the next wave is, is going to be all that, but bigger, and, and have more people participate, right? We're going to see AI PCs. AIPC chips. So we're going to see Intel, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Microsoft with Windows. Uh, we're going to see infrastructure at the edge. So folks like uh, HPE. We're going to see AI smartphones and AI chips, the Qualcomms, the Skyworks. And then finally, uh, the SASs of the world who haven't necessarily participated uh, in this uh, financially, the Adobe's, uh, and even, even the boxes. So yeah, that's it. Uh, we have AI, more AI, uh, quantum evolutions, the hybrid multi-cloud progression uh, with more fabrics and an evolution of the metaverse. While it won't be mainstream, we're going to learn a lot. So much there, Pat. Thanks so much for uh, giving us the little bit of predictions to the future. Look, I'm not going to take any risks and, and, and even begin to proclaim that there is another topic besides AI because there's not. Nothing else will be top of, of mind or front and center. Now, again, all of the infrastructure and parts that make AI happen are going to continue to need to be invested in. Where AI happens will continue to be a conversation, cloud, edge, somewhere in between. But here's my three big predictions for next year. Responsibility and trustworthiness of AI. You know, I shared a, a, a picture this week, this, this morning on Twitter to a lot of acclaim of a person that negotiated with a chat bot to buy a Chevy Tahoe for a dollar. Look, it's probably not a binding contract. The fact of the matter is, is that people are gonna continue to look for ways to take advantage of, of enterprises, companies, businesses that are gonna be using chat bots to create binding uh, relationships, not to mention that the grounding and trustworthiness of the responses is gonna need to, we're gonna need to continue to work on that. Companies are gonna need to figure out how to do this correctly. I like indemnification. I like the companies like Microsoft and IBM and Google have all talked about this, but how about better than indemnifying it, actually making this stuff work correctly? That would be better. And so this will be a big focus of the next year is going to be building um, grounded vector databases that stack with knowledge graphs that are accurate and can be trusted for accurate outputs, one. two. Monetization, you kind of alluded to this, Pat, but 
this was a year that was all about kind of hand waving and chest puffing. Only a couple of companies actually meaningfully benefited from this AI wave. Everyone else actually saw revenue declines, even if the part of their business benefited from AI. Think about all the infrastructure companies and server companies that saw massive declines in CPU servers, sold GPUs, but still didn't even offset it to the point where they were growing. These companies are going to need to really figure out their AI stories, and they're going to need to get above water on AI. And by the way, I do think some of it's going to be through rotation back to traditional compute CPUs and accelerators that will actually be used to inference AI because it won't all be done on really high priced GPUs. And that brings me to my third big projection and can't wait to be over in Davos to spend all my time talking about this fact. By the way, there's some hand waving. Hand waving. Sustainability, and not sustainability from the lens of the 2020 and 2021 version of that. I kind of find that to all be nonsense at this point. But it's going to be, the fact is, of 1% to 2% of the world's power is being consumed by data centers right now. We do need to figure out a way, if we're going to continue to exponentially grow the utilization of AI, large language models, training models, and GPUs, um, it's going to be important that we find that balance with lower power, more sustainable, higher performance variants. So this is gonna come down to our friends in the silicon industry. Pat, you and I will talk a lot about this. And then optimizing these workloads to deliver more sustainable outputs. The world is watching. This is one of those true cases where the utilization of power while building high performance needs to match. And we need to be using the best and most optimized silicon and applications to deliver more efficiency because this is only gonna grow. The demand and use is only gonna grow. So those are my three. There's a lot of other things we could predict on, Pat. Um, oh, I got one more. Um, I think the Cybertruck is hideous. I think it's a failure. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, um, and by the way, I like Elon Musk. So I'm not, this is not like a Dan doesn't like Tesla or Elon thing. This is like I'm driving around Austin and I saw pictures of this thing online. I'm like, that thing is bad to the bone. Like, then I went to the gym last night and I saw one sitting there. And by the way, it's the, the siding on this thing, the material that it's made out of looks like, you know, those refrigerators, they get all the smudges on them. Like you get your finger, you know, they're the uh, stainless steel with the smudging and you can't get the smudging off. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to have their wives yelling at them because they got smudges all over the side of their cyber truck. And I don't think they come off. But anyways, so. I don't know, man. I saw one on the road and I want one just because it's so unique. And, God, I'm, gonna, different. I'm probably going to have to pop your tires or something. I don't think you can. I, I, can't you unique, shoot the though. tires? It's not going it... unique when there's like 2 million of these things running around looking all dystopian all over Austin. I mean, I can't wait till it becomes like the Uber of choice. Like, you're going to have the Uber Cybertruck. It's going to be like its own Uber category. It's going to be like, like $120,000. Right? Know. What's that? Like one hundred twenty grand. What's that matter? I mean, and, and when I went to Amsterdam, the Tesla S has been the taxi for like the last 10 years. So, you know what? It, it, maybe we're right. 40 maybe grand, 120 grand, no difference. That's, that's why I mean, we're here, man. We're here to make proclamations. I want Tesla to do well. I want Elon to do well. I don't have an issue yeah. there. I just think the truck's not. So yeah, I think it is ugly. 